Kimray has partnered with Lamont Valve and Arrester to provide reliable solutions for your well site storage tanks. In this video, we're going to take a look at how to maintain, clean, and assemble Lamont deflagration flame arresters. To keep your flame arrester operating at peak performance, it's important to inspect and maintain the flame bank elements at least once a year. Depending on your application, you may need to do it more often. You'll also want to inspect it anytime you notice excessive pressure drops or if you believe your arrester has been exposed to a flame front. After the first flame event, it's critical to replace the flame arrester as it can no longer be guaranteed. Now let's look at how this is done on a three inch inline deflagration flame arrester. First, remove one side of the bonding strap with a 5/32 hex wrench. Make sure the weight of the flame bank assembly is supported before removing the studs and nuts. You can use the housing handles or lifting eyes. Or, depending on the size of your arrester, you can leave the bottom four stud bolts in place after loosening them. On this 3-inch model, these bottom studs will not obstruct the removal of the flame bank, but also support the weight during removal. Next, loosen the bolting nuts with two 3 quarter inch or adjustable wrenches on each opposing nut. We will be fully removing the top four bolts and only loosening the remaining. To separate the base halves, you may need to use the separating nuts to push the two bases from one another. Remove the flame bank element housing assembly for inspection. It's critical that you never use sharp tools or probes to clean the element. It can damage the integrity of the passages, making the flame arrester ineffective. Check both sides of the element and supporting grids for any signs of damage, corrosion, or buildup. If the element looks damaged, replace it immediately. It is not recommended to disassemble the flame bank assembly itself. Next, inspect the gaskets for damage and replace them if necessary. Inspect the gasket seating surface of the flanges. They must be clean, flat, and free of scratches, corrosion, and tool marks. View the element openings through a light source to check for clogs or obstructions. If it's dirty, it can be cleaned by one of three methods. Make sure you have the appropriate PPE before using any of these methods. First, you can use compressed air equal to or less than 80 PSIG. You could also use a water purge method with a low pressure spray nozzle equal to or less than 40 PSIG. If you need to use high pressure steam, make sure to not focus the steam too tightly as it could damage the element. Lastly, you could also use a non-flammable degreaser wash followed by compressed air until dry. Now we will assemble the housing, bases, and gaskets. First, install the gaskets. Add a small amount of grease to the textured side of the gasket face to make installation easier. Place the gaskets on the flanges, centered with the bolt circles or counterbores if present. Next, place the flame bank assembly into position. Ensure the lifting handles or lifting eyes are on the top. The flame bank assembly is bi-directional and can be installed either way. There's not a front or a back. Lubricate all studs with grease or a similar lubricant. For high temperature service, or if you're using stainless steel fasteners, apply an anti-seize compound like moly disulfide instead. Check that the gaskets are flat and not crimped in any place before installing the studs. If you removed the studs that include the separating nuts, be sure they are reinstalled in an accessible spot for future removal. If you use the separating nuts for disassembly, reposition them away from the flange so they are not to inhibit the installation. Tighten the fasteners to half the value listed in the torque chart in a cross torquing pattern to provide an evenly compressed gasket joint. Torque all fasteners to the final value and double check that no further nut rotation occurs. Make sure the separating nuts are snug to the inside of the flange. 
Finally, reattach the bonding strap with the 532nd hex wrench. With regular inspection and cleaning, you can be sure your equipment is running safely and efficiently. If you have any questions about this process, reach out to Kimray Product and Customer Support.